Welcome back to The David Pakman Show. Several new members I want to say hello to on The David Pakman Show membership program. William W., Joanna H., Jesse V., Fred B., and a new member at uh, level three on the membership program, which will be known as something else soon enough once we figure out what it'll be, John C. So thanks to everybody, davidpakman.com. Of course, you get the uh, podcast commercial free. You get two bonus shows a week. The entire five-year archive, which Lewis likes to download the, the 2005 shows and basically just laugh for an hour straight. That's his, your favorite uh, late-night activity, is it not? If you'd like to learn how not to do a radio show, <laughs> <laughs> study, go study into, our early material. Go into the archive, exactly right. Uh, let's add another tally mark to the list of violent extremists inspired by Glenn Beck. This is, you remember, of course, the story of Byron Williams and the Tides Foundation, right? Mm -hmm. There is now another arrest that has taken place of a man named Kenneth Kimbley Jr. Let me play a little bit of this for you, just to uh, see what you think, and then we'll talk about it. I have some very definite thoughts about it. Good evening, and thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Randy Shaw. Two Idaho men are in jail tonight, accused of making hand grenades and keeping an illegal arsenal of guns and a stockpile of ammo. They were arrested in Spirit Lake on Saturday when the FBI says they started making a dozen grenades. Crimpton's William Pitts is live with more. Well, the FBI says Kenneth Kimbley and Stephen Weingar were taking dummy grenades. Those are grenades that can't blow up, the kind you can buy in any Army surplus store, and turning them into live grenades. What we don't know is why they wanted them. There was at least 10. All right. So lo and behold, we do more research about this story. Kenneth Kimbley Jr., who's 58, discussed bombing local bridges with an undercover federal agent. He made threatening statements towards President Obama. And this actually led investigators last July to seize about 20,000 rounds of ammunition and a bunch of firearms from his property. Now, when he and other suspected, suspected militia members gathered to construct grenades, uh, the it, it uh, this this was all being done with the knowledge of undercover federal agents. Incredibly, his public defender is actually using a Glenn Beck connection as a defense here. Here's a quote. In fact, everything said by Mr. Kimbley is no different than what his idol TV commentator Glenn Beck typically states on the air and is protected free speech. So here we don't actually have a reporter going in to talk to Byron Williams and figuring out, by the way, you know, who else is talking about the Tides Foundation, but getting something out of Byron Williams about how incredible and incredibly influential Glenn Beck has been on him. We actually have it as part of the defense. Kimbley's idol is Glenn Beck and it's protected speech. What is going on here? It's amazing, is it not crazy? Another, we have a number of, for people who don't remember all of the other examples, Jim David Adkison's shooting attack on a Knoxville Unitarian church. Adkison left behind this manifesto and it actually repeated a bunch of right wing talking points, which were generated by Fox commentators. It actually cited by name Bernard Goldberg's book, who is a regular Fox News contributor, a uh, regular guest on the Bill O'Reilly show. And his library at home stocked full of books by Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, Michael Savage. We've got Richard Poplowski. He shot the three Pittsburgh police officers because he believed there was this conspiracy theory that Obama was going to take Americans guns away from them. And he reportedly believed that cops had uh, arrived to carry it out. He was a white supremacist. He posted Beck videos about FEMA concentration camps on white supremacist uh, websites. And then, of course, Scott Rader, whose assassination of uh, Dr. George Tiller heavily involved uh, in uh, with weak weekly pieces from Bill O'Reilly. Uh, several attack Tiller as a baby killer and uh, so on and so forth. So the irony here, Lewis, is this. These people, in, in many of them, have the same sequence of events. They say, I'm afraid the government is going to take away my guns, and they get those ideas from, from right-wing media. They decide, because of that, to start creating these massive caches of illegal weapons to defend themselves when somebody comes to take away their guns. The authorities catch wind of the fact that these people are buying guns illegally. So what do they do? Obviously, they show up and they take away their guns, just like Glenn Beck told them would happen. See? They're right. It all is happening the way they're being promised by the right wing media. Hard. It's going to be hard to talk them out of that, is it not? I think it will. <laughs> not, not, that, not that it was Glenn Beck who had the foresight to, uh, to see that happening.
just just funny coincidence. Exactly. Exactly right. And the, the problem is that once it happens, you're not going to be able to talk anybody out of it. Right. Now, similarly, speaking of right wing media, Al Sharpton now wants the FCC to shut down Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh's racist talk. What he's talking about, I'll play for you here. Let's take a listen. This is a civil rights bill. This is reparations, whatever you want to call it. The objective is unemployment. The objective is more food stamp benefits. The objective is more unemployment benefits. The objective is an expanding welfare state. Okay. So uh, Al Sharpton doesn't like that, right? So Al Sharpton comes out and he says what? Well, he would like to see FCC action against Rush Limbaugh. Let's take a listen to that. Uh, have a series of meetings going on and we're going to see the FCC next week. We're not going to stand by and allow publicly regulated radio and television just go for marketing and promoting this kind of racism. Here's a man who calls the president names, plays a record, calling him the good Negro that has the... Okay. First of all, just no. No, Al. This is not the way it works. Right. First Amendment. Secondly, Al Sharpton himself has a racist past. So I know I get criticism for this every time I mention it, but the reality is that although Al Sharpton is very popular among the left, he's not popular with me. And uh, again, diamond merchants to refer to Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And we can go on and on. I won't get it all going again because well, everybody will get very riled up, and myself included. But Al Sharpton, to me, is not the guy who should be the arbiter of racism. But number three, and the most boring one, but really the most sobering, is that he's mistaking the FCC for a content enforcement bureau. I mean, the FCC has a very narrow and limited definition of, of speech and images that they can regulate. If you want to argue, to connect this back to the Glenn Beck story, if you want to argue that Rush Limbaugh saying these things is in some way inciting violence or meant to cause actual action in real life, you can go that route. You could make that argument. That's not the argument Al Sharpton is making, but let's be honest. Glenn Beck has had many more actual actions linked to him in the last two years. If, it, if there are actual violent actions, if there are hate crimes or crimes against black people because of things Rush Limbaugh said, they, they haven't made it into the mainstream media, and that doesn't mean they don't exist, but I'm not aware of them. Glenn Beck has many more actual actions linked to him, so it's going to be hard to fight Rush on inciting with this given that there has been nothing done about or regarding Glenn Beck, right? right if there's right. no case against Beck, it's going to be hard to make one against Limbaugh for saying this is a civil rights reparations bill. Right. Now, who Sharpton really wants to talk to is, is whoever employs Rush Limbaugh. And I think he'll get about as far as that as he will with the FCC. Yeah, you're, you're basically right. The David Pakman Show is made possible by listeners like you and by Greenfield Savings Bank, building strong communities one account at a time, with offices in Greenfield, Amherst, Conway, Shelburne Falls, South Deerfield, and Turner's Falls, and online at greenfieldsavings.com. By the Daily Hampshire Gazette and GazetteNet.com, connecting our communities with local news and information. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. Find out more about underwriting The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com.